In the southern part of Croatia, in the peninsula of Peljezak, there is a winemaker that does things a little differently. That's right, this winery ages their wine 75 feet beneath the sea's surface. After growing up around many traditional winemakers, Edie had an idea to combine his two favorite pastimes, scuba diving and drinking wine. So he decided to try an aged wine in the sea. My first idea was to put wine in a amphora and as such, we put it in the sea. To avoid any leaks in these ancient storage jars, Edie uses a glass bottle to keep the wine in and salt water out. He uses custom-made cages that line the sea floor to hold the wine in place. Boca stoji obrnuto gornji dio, to jest čep stoji u odnosu na dno naprema dole. U rasponu od jedno i pet do dvije godine i niko to ne dira. Ali u biti inače se preveravaju svako petnestak dana se zaranja da se vidi što je i kako naste. Boravi na na temperaturama koje su idealne za održavanje crnog vina i što je najvažnija stvar naša da boravi u tišini. Ova tišina je jedan od faktora s kojom mi želimo dati jednu notu prilikom kušenja vina. And to Edie, it's this silence that differentiates his unique underwater wine from the pack. Zato što svim podrubima tokom godine se radi. Vaza se odmiču neki predmeti, vaza se nešto radi, vaza se nešto odmiče, promiče. Tri ti zvukovi koji se događaju u podrumima sigurno utječu, jer to je jedan živ organizam, utječu na, na, na vino. Vino dobiva drugačiji i puniji okus nego što je vino u boci normalno pakirano. Ja mogu osjetiti razliku, a svakako ljudi koji su baš u tom biznisu, poznati sumeljeri, sigurno će ovaj, primjeriti jako veliku razliku. Bioluminescence is the scintillating effect of a living thing emitting light. And in a small coastal town in central Japan, one glowing creature is also a delicacy. Toyama Bay is around 4,000 feet deep, one of the deepest bays in all of Japan and home to one of the only commonly edible bioluminescent species in the world. Firefly squid fishing isn't a normal fishing job. They have to fish in the dead of night. Bioluminescent sea creatures prefer the dark depths of the ocean. But the firefly squid lights up the shores when they spawn, making them easier to catch. Where is all that squid going? Well, to places like Kapo Araki, a small Japanese restaurant. え、名前はアラキキヨフンと言います。仕事は日本料理の板前です。ホタリカの素材を壊さずに食べられるようなそういう味付けをしております。富山県のホタリカの旨味っていうのはホタリカの肝なんですね。肝と卵を甘くて美
I feel we are overusing the resources of our planet. We want to expand the possibilities of agriculture in an environment where it wasn't thought that you could actually grow plants. We think that that can really change the outlook for the future. Nemo's Garden is an alternative agriculture project where we're trying to find a way to grow plants underwater in underwater greenhouses. We have grown between 50 and 60 different species. Basil, different kinds of salads, goji, soy, sprouts, medical herbs. Harvesting the plants is uh, actually very simple. We cut it just like we would do on land and then we wrap it into um, reusable plastic uh, containers and we just close it up and we uh, pick it up on the surface nice and comfortable. The main challenges of growing plants underwater are it has never been done, it's all new. Initially the learning curve was very steep. Every operation has to be done scuba diving. And that is a challenge on itself. The main advantages are the protection from outside elements. We are underwater, nothing can get to us. No pests means no chemicals needed. And of course, no hail, no storms. The temperature stability that we have inside the water, which is a lot more stable than outside, plus the higher pressure underwater, uh, apparently uh, makes our plants grow faster and stronger and with higher content of essential oils. The water that we use for the plants is mostly from evaporation of the surface of the salt water. Once it's evaporated, it condenses back into rain. We basically create fresh water automatically that we don't need to consume any energy for. We know that climate change and, and the future of demography is headed towards a way where we will be overusing the resources of our planet. I hope the Nemo's Garden is a way to use those resources in a very uh, respectful way and balanced way. The whole concept for the project is to expand the possibilities of uh, agriculture. In a world that is covered more than 70% in water, it simply makes sense to us. Seaweed is a common ingredient in Japanese cuisine, but there's a unique type growing in the Pacific Ocean. Seventy miles off the coast of mainland Japan is the small island of Okinawa home to one of the most unusual farming methods in the world. Mr. Oshiro comes from a seafaring family, and today he is one of the farmers growing mazuku, a special seaweed only grown in these waters. Each fall, a web of nets are laced with mazuku seedlings on land, then, Mr. Oshiro and his son lay the nets in rows in the shallow water. This ingenious system allows the mazuku to grow sustainably by not creating additional waste. And when the time is right, it is harvested with two boats and their giant vacuum. The day's harvest is then taken to his factory, where it's cleaned, weighed, and processed. Then it's off to the markets to sell his underwater treasure. Mozuku is in high demand. It's packed with nutrients, so many people eat it for a health boost. But that wasn't always the case. Mozuku 
日本の文化が入ってきていっぱいそれでたくさん食べるようになったのはまだこの最近のことだと思いますね。世界中にもずくを広げる可能性を沖縄は持ってます。In recent years, Mr. Oshiro has seen a change in the ocean, so the future of his Mazuku is uncertain. This is a life-saving thing. Everyone is going to be able to do it. If you don't have a good thing, the Mazuku is going to be able to do it. And the other thing is the environment. If you have a good thing, the environment is going to be able to do it. その環境に対する意識のレベルを高めることが多分海を守ることだからまだ海からいっぱい恵む受け取るのに返してないと私は思います。その私のお父さんからいろんな技術を学んでそして考え方カルチャーそしてその生き方いろんなことを私は学びましたそれをまた自分の息子にうんやっぱ伝えないといけない彼は私のビジネスをね継いでくれると信じてます私だけで終わりたくない次の世代にちゃんとつないでいかないといけない